Breaking news as we now have more and more information on a total economic meltdown on the world stage. Now, we already know that China is absolutely plummeting. Japan is absolutely plummeting. But what we're going to go into today in thorough detail, and you may not know, Europe is also plummeting and their economy is already in or is on the verge of a great depression. So we're going to ask things like, is this the start of one world order? I don't know. I don't even know what that means half the time, Mitch. I don't know if this is you know, going to lead into the next one world order. But I will tell you this, Mitch. I don't like wearing ties, my friend. I do not <laughs> like wearing ties. How are you doing, buddy? Okay. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate. Man, I don't know why you like you know, ties so much. It's a it's an old school art, isn't it? Force of habit. <laughs> Force of habit. I love it, man. I love it. So let me show the viewers. Uh, you know, actually, before we begin, any uh, any new updates on the any new cases? Obviously, we've got a couple cases. We're fighting property tax. I always want to let the viewers know where we're at on that. Any new results? Not as far as our lawsuit is concerned at the appellate. We're just waiting to get into that court. And I believe we'll win there without too much of a problem. And then we'll be pushed back to the Denton court. And then we can bring forth all the evidence, which is already available on our website. So we're not hiding anything. It's readily there for everybody to see. But um, open source. nonetheless, we want to make the formal presentation uh, to the judge. And then we'll keep it right on moving. Um, other than that, there was a memo that was sent out yesterday to the Texas Senate Finance Committee. And um, that'll work its way through. But that was in direct response to them inadvertently responding to us via the video. So, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. You know, the video is topped with how much tenacity you have and how much of a workaholic you are, Mitch. Uh, they're doomed, my friend. But let's jump. <laughs> let's jump right in now uh, with the viewers. And I want to show them a couple bullet points in regards to China and Japan. And then we'll jump into Europe. Take a look at this, Mitch. A couple bullet points. China's economy is in trouble. The warning signs are clear. Take a look at the date here, September 9th, 829. So this is a brand new article. And again, I'm just going to read four bullet points. China's CPI grew by just 0.6% in August, falling short of expectations, signaling weak consumer demand and deflation risk. Producer prices have fallen 23 consecutive months with PPI declining by 1.8% year over year in August, indicating severe overcapacity issues. That is not good. Former Bank of Japan governor warns China may face deflation similar to Japan's lost decades and left swift action is taken. But isn't that why they're in the situation they're in? Is because there's too much swift action? Last bullet point. Despite stimulus, economists see China's current policies as overly focused on supply, failing to revive domestic consumption. Moving on to Japan, this is a little bit older, but Japan un unexpectedly slips into recession. Germany, now world's third biggest economy, and obviously Germany's not doing so good either. This article headline is interesting because population is a vital for places like Japan, actually anywhere in the world as far as growth is concerned. Japan's population fell by 800,000 last year as demographic crisis accelerates. What's going on in China? What's going on in Japan? Obviously, China has a massive housing market meltdown right now. But anything you want to start out by saying? Well, the nexus between the Chinese problem, the European problem, and the American problem is the exact same nexus, which is all of these countries believe that they can spend their way out of problems. And yet they fail to understand that the denominator is really the income per taxpayer and the expenses per taxpayer, which creates the net revenue per taxpayer. So I was just fiddling around with some numbers. And if you assume that there's $163 trillion worth of debt, and we'll call it unfunded and national debt as the combination, and you say that all the population in the United States is 330,000 people. Well, the net result of that is if you, mom and pop, have a credit card and that credit card limit is $10,000, well, the government's credit card on your back 
is 50,000 times bigger, yet they expect you to pay for it. Now, China's done the exact same thing. Yeah, I know it's a little mind blowing, isn't it? Well, I mean, yeah, it's mind blowing because because <laughs> that's <laughs> um, I was trying to do, I, didn't, I don't even know how many zeros that is, but I know it's a lot of zeros, Mitch. Yes, it's a lot of zeros. The point of the matter is it's mathematically impossible for it to be paid off. But yeah. China has done the same thing. Now, their population is bigger, okay? However, their tax paying population is really not that much different in a, on a per capita basis, okay? So they created what is called ghost cities. They yeah. built the real estate, put the quality of that real estate to the side, but they built it. It has a debt. They promoted it in their markets. It was levered. They put out bonds. It was levered. It's all garbage. Because at the tail end of the day, the nexus, just like I was saying, between all these countries, including London, that in the European Union, the nexus is that they believe that they had the implicit guarantee of the government to justify the expenses on credit cards that they did not have. The public never signed up for it to begin with because the public never understood it. So the reality is the system in and of itself is about to blow to shreds because they refuse to look at the real fact. And the only thing, that, as I was saying in the prior show, was that the prior video, is that the only thing that matters is the economic engine, and that's mom and pop. You simply can't spend more than they can bring in. And that's what you've done. Yeah. 50,000 50, times over. Yeah, I mean, and you can call it a show. I'd be flattered if you did. But, you know, the reality is, Mitch, did you smile a little bit? All right, I got you to smile a little bit there. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> hey, man, we've been working hard, man. We've been working so hard. I don't think anyone realizes how hard we've been working. You know, it feels so nice to be back. I've been telling Mitch, you guys, I've been so preoccupied with these courses to give back, man. I mean, it's just what I got to do. I got to do it because it's on my heart. I mean, I've lost everything. The viewers know that, Mitch, already. I lost everything. And it's not necessarily because of the Fed. Come to find out, that's why I'm struggling now. But I lost everything because <laughs> of myself. I lost everything because of apathy. And I'm really hoping that you guys don't have the apathy. But I mean, Mitch, I mean, seriously, can you talk about like, isn't it fair to say that the decline in population is only going to accelerate the existing problem in Japan? And by the way, Japan has the highest debt to GDP in any country in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yes. And it will accelerate and is accelerating here for the exact same reason. When you put mom and pop under stress, why would they want to have children that they can't afford? It's not a question of having one child or two children or four children. The reality is for a lot of people, it's not affordable. And you can get into the demographics and the strata of those demographics. But the reality is it just simply isn't affordable. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, and I think what it shows is, is, you know, maybe decades of unaffordability in Japan, it's starting to show in those demographics. I think that's fair to say. No, um, it's, ahead, decades, it, it, it's decades of financial abuse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why you have a GDP that's so great. You know, your, your GDP to debt is so great in China, but the United States isn't that far behind. And when you really right. do take into account the unfunded liabilities, my guess is we're actually exceeding Japan in, in reality. Nobody wants to talk about it, but that's probably pretty damn close. Yeah. You know, something else that no one wants to talk about is, and I don't mind talking about this just quickly, is, is no one talks about where China learned to be liars from. I, I wonder where they got the handbook, Mitch, on how to hide information, manipulate information, and lie to the public. I don't know where they could have got that. Uh, if I would have assumed, and you know what they say about assumptions, I would assume it was from the U.S., since the U.S. appears to be number one in the world at lying and manipulating. But regardless, I don't want to go into a rant. Let's go into this article, and I got a couple questions for you. I'm going to go a paragraph at a time here, probably, Mitch, because I really want to dig into this, because the world's collapsing right before our eyes. And as I'm reading this, I want the viewers to ask, is this the start of one world order? And what's the crypto going to be? So I can buy some of that before it skyrockets. You know what I'm talking about? But either way, uh, Europe and extra stencil, that's for Melody Wright, extra stencil, two stencils, not one, danger without massive new spending and joint debt. Germany immediately says no. Pretty sure that stands for no right there. Just want to read this first paragraph, Mitch, and I want to get uh, your opinion here because this first paragraph doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and so I appreciate you. It has been a while 
since we were reminded that without the ECB's constant backstop, that kills people, by the way, backstop to banks kills people, the Frankenstein monster that is the Europe Union is doomed. Well, this morning, former ECB president reminded us of just that when he called on the EU to invest as much as huh, $884 billion dollars and not just one bailout, Mitch. That's what that's what got me. Okay, I was like, oh dang, another bailout. But no, eight hundred eighty-four billion dollars extra per year, a year, you guys, and commit. And there's more. It wasn't just that. I mean, you guys, give me half half a billion. I'll take care of a lot. To the regular issuance of common bonds to make the block more competitive with China and the U.S. And I put a question here, Mitch. I mean, what do they want to be more competitive? Is it the inflation? Do they want to have high inflation uh, like the U.S.? You know what? 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 What are they talking about? What do they want us to believe when they say when they're selling the public, Mitch? You know we're going to print more money because we have to be competitive with China and the U.S. Can you explain what they're attempting to tell us there? Yeah, they're going to bankrupt the European Union. So let's go back in history. Um, I've been very fortunate that I've actually met several Italian companies, and I want to go back even before that. So when the European Union was a concept before it became the European Union, in order for the European Union to become a European Union, they went to the Italians and they said, this is what we're going to do. And the Italians bid off on it. The day the European Union was created, the Italian lira disintegrated 32% in 24 hours. To this day, it has never regained. Now, what ends up happening? Well, over time, through the nonsense of the European Union, there was a marble company, and I've had the privilege of going to that marble company and having quite a discussion. And that marble company ended up taking marble out of the mines. It owns the mountain. It used to have hundreds of employees that would machine that marble into all sorts of things, including floor tile. Well, it ended up that the Chinese bought the trucks. They send the trucks from the port to the mine. All the employees are gone through the European nonsense, European Union nonsense. The Italians ended up training the Chinese to manufacture the tiles. So via the European Union, the Italians have lost generations, right? This is 30 years. They've lost generations of skilled trades to the Chinese. So the marble comes out of the mine, gets stuck in a Chinese truck, taken down to the port. From the port, it goes back to China. It's all Chinese, other than the ownership of the mine itself. Well, okay, so we have a devaluation of the lira. It's now gone um, and down 32% and it never came back. But the country, look at it from the standpoint of the country. What did the country do? Well, it exported its culture. So for a time, Xenia Pants, the cloth manufacturer, um, ended up manufacturing in China. They brought it back because the quality went dis disintegrated. So they brought it back. But the point of the matter is all this European Union nonsense has done has in fact exported the culture of all the European Union countries. You have exported the jobs of all the European countries. Mm. Draghi is their form of our Federal Reserve. And Draghi basically has feces for brain cells because the bottom line is you cannot stand in front of the population and say, give us more money when, like I said before, the nexus between all of this is mom and pop. If you take away mom and pop's income, which is what the European Union has done in spades, the reality is there's no more money to be had. And that is the big problem. You've destroyed the culture, you exported it, you exported the jobs, and now you have, you, you, you dare to hold your hand out. Mama Pop, give us more money to bankroll our credit card and the fact that we've destroyed your life and we've destroyed your country simultaneously. But Mitch, isn't it fair to say, and we're gonna go back into this article, so maybe we can take your time to answer it if you want, but the entire world is doing this. I mean, literally, the, I, I would venture to say 
the global middle class, the entire globe's middle class, doesn't matter where you live in this world, is being crushed by the same thing. Bad spending, corruption, greed, fraud, some type of central bank. And now, you know, people are starting to figure out, oh, yeah, that's right. We've learned this throughout the existence of human beings. Human nature appears to always take over uh, the elites, the powers at be. And so, you know, going back to the marble, is that where they got the term, I've lost my marbles? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I even met in Streza in Italy, I actually met a water taxi driver who used to work in that mine. And he was a machinist, and he was the guy that actually trained the Chinese on how to format the tiles, how to polish the tiles. So he goes from a highly skilled job to a water taxi driver. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I mean, it's quite the downgrade. So the point of the matter is, especially for him, because it was a generational business. His father was there. He expected yeah. his son to be there. Well, that never happened. So yeah. the correlation between these countries and these morons that are running it, i.e. Powell, and again, I'm not being accusatory. What I'm saying is simply fact. You can't stand in front of the population and say, please pay off my credit card. But that's the correlation between all of them. That's exactly what they're doing. I mean, maybe if it was the first time, Mitch, but this isn't the first time. This has been going on for decades and decades. But let's go back into the article. I got a couple more things for you. In his long-awaited report on European Union competitiveness, again, was that inflation? Like how much can our citizens handle this? But anyways, they go on. He urged Europe to develop its advanced technologies. That almost sounds like a Pegasus unicorn, something even uh, majestic. Like, yeah, yeah, man, I can get behind that. Let's, let's, Let's put a lot of effort, Mitch, into some advanced technology. And I put an arrow there. Is that UFOs you're talking about? Is that Antarctica? I don't know. What's going on in Antarctica? You want to start talking about the Anunnaki? I won't do that. Okay. But I'm wondering, is that just a trigger word? I don't know. It's unclear as it says right there. But this goes on. Create a plan to meet its climate targets. <laughs> Sound familiar? And boost defense and security of critical raw materials, labeling the tax as an extra stencil challenge, extra stencil, get it? If Europe cannot become more productive, we will be forced to choose. Well, then just choose not to rip people off and spend money that's not yours. Can you choose to do the right thing that we were taught, at least I was taught when I was, I don't know, in second grade? Don't, you can't spend what you don't have. It goes on. We will not be able to become at once a leader in new technologies. Again, what are they talking about? What, what, what technology are they leaders in? I don't, a beacon of, of climate responsibility, Mitch. So they're the leader in climate responsibility technology. Is this what their hopes are on? Like, my gosh, I'm starting to feel like the U.S. is, is strong again when I'm reading this, and an independent player of the world stage. Okay, whatever. We will not be able to finance our social model, or socialism model. Is that what that, no, social model. We will have to scale back some, if not all, of our ambitions. Um, and I wrote here, how can citizens be productive? How, how can people be productive when they can't even afford to live? I mean, look at China. How can people afford to be productive when they just potentially spent their life savings on a building that, that they just bulldozed down. Any comments, Mitch? Yeah, you just made my case that Draghi has feces for brain cells. I mean, there's literally no meaning in that sentence. That's beyond a socialist statement. It's mathematically impossible. Um, it just simply can't be done. At the tail end of the day, he's saying, give us the money or our current ideology is going to fail. Good. Don't give him the money. Let it fail. Take back your countries, put your, your culture back where it should be. I mean, the idea of the European Union was a failed social construct from the word go. It's just taken 30 some odd years in order to prove it. But it's only existed on the backs of the taxpayers. The taxpayers should revolt up and simply say, that's it, we're not gonna pay. What are you gonna do? There's tens of millions of us. What are you gonna do? Make your move. See, and that's the point to all this. You've got to put a stop to it because, in fact, all these countries, like I said, the, the key word is correlated. This has been a correlated attack 
on mom and pop. And the rule of 72 has kicked in at least for 30 years. Double, double, double. Every five to seven years, the debt goes up and then they turn around constantly. And that's what Draghi's doing. He, Draghi's no better, in fact, than what you just saw last week at the Tarrant Appraisal District, where all these school districts showed up and said, you've got to raise the taxes, otherwise we're bankrupt. At which point I responded, okay, you're bankrupt today, never mind the bonds you want to issue tomorrow that aren't going to get paid back. Draghi's the exact same thing. It's always a threat. It's always put placing a fear. Okay, let's go. Put the fear on the table. Let's move. Because it isn't true. Take your culture back. Mm, that is so well said. And you kind of helped me think of some interesting things. You know, while one hand they're correlated, right? Like whoever's the puppet master, they're correlated behind the scenes. But I will also say that they have also successfully divided mom and pop. And that may be the biggest crisis of all because we don't have that synergy. And that's why the apathy has taken over. Before I jump in the article, let me ask you this question. It kind of came to my mind here. Obviously, the U.S. is in massive debt. We're nearing uh, you know, GDP to national debt like China. I mean, we're not far off, Mitch. Do you think that we should be in debt right now? Debt is not mm -hmm. bad if it is handled properly. The problem is that these people in positions of responsibility are irresponsible. The idea that they should have a credit card that is 50,000 times per person greater than an allotment of $10,000 per every single living, breathing person in the United States is insanity. So if you break it down to a municipal level and say, okay, fine, we're going to issue bonds. Okay, fine. Let's go back and look at a typical scenario under a Warren Buffett type company. If the company doesn't have greater than 30 to 40% of its value in debt, that's a reasonably safe company. Okay. Our gross domestic product hovering around 4 trillion, and yet we've got 163 trillion. Uh, yeah, that isn't going to fly, right? So if our total debt load included unfunded liabilities was $35 trillion, a little hard to handle, but not impossible. Where we are now, no way. Debt isn't the enemy. It's the people who are creating the debt and, and, and gaslighting the public. Oh, this isn't so bad. We'll get out of it. Um, as we explained before in, in the previous video, no, you can't because the gross domestic product isn't there to do it. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can lower interest rates to zero and it still isn't going to work. Well, we've done that and it didn't work. It actually made things worse. And some would argue, including me, that that's why we're in the situation we're in now. We're not in the situation now because of high interest rates. We're in the situation we're in now because of low interest rates. And so when I look around the world, Mitch, in Germany, Japan, Europe, China, do you think this is the start to a one world order type of situation. And some would mark the argument that that's what the U.S. wants, but that's not quite what's happening anymore. Any comments on that? The argument would be amongst the fools, globalism versus nationalism. Nationalism is the only thing that works because it's a capitalist-based, human resource-based economy. All this other nonsense is nothing more than transferring funds from mom and pop. And mom and pop includes people on all political spectrums. The tail end of the day, what we're talking about is a nonpartisan issue. If you're a Democrat, your money is being stolen. We've got the evidence. It's clear. If you're a Republican, your money is being stolen. We've got the evidence. It's clear. We're talking something that's nonpartisan. It's just a matter of waking people up. This idea of saying, well, this is going to be a one world order or it's going to be a globalist economy. There's no such thing. It can't happen. All you have to do is look at the European Union and say, OK, fine. You morons have had the last 30 some odd years working on this. You blew it because there was no such thing to begin with. All that happened was your wealth over here got transferred to these people who shouldn't have a job over here. You know, how that's mm. They don't need that money, Mitch. I mean, just let go of the power. My God, like power, it just, it's, it's just. 
it's it drives me crazy, man. It, it drives me crazy because I, I thought I did the right thing back when I lost everything and I struggled for nine years. Turns out I'm the stupid one because I'm the one that, well, I thought I was doing the right thing by giving my house back and, and things like that. But regardless, let me go back on this article because it gets way worse. And I can't believe I'm reading this, Mitch. To achieve his proposed goal of socialism and communism of his region, I added that last part, guys. Uh, Europe would need to boost investment by five percentage points of the bloc's GDP in order to transform its economy. I thought it was transformed already. What about the false promises? So that it can remain competitive. Here we go with the competitive again. My gosh. Needless to say, that is not only unprecedented for comparison, the additional investment provided by the Marshall Plan between 1948 and 51 amounted to around 1% to 2% of GDP annually. It will simply not happen without a huge global crisis, which will make the panicked reaction of the COVID pandemic pale by comparison. That is heavy to read. And that is three times, I believe, two to three times more than ever. They're saying they need two to three times more stimulus than they've ever had before or their entire economy is going to collapse and it goes into how it's, you know, they'll need more than World War II. I mean, this is crazy. Mitch, just one more time. If they do that type of stimulus, all right, the impact on the consumer, it's going to be the death of the consumer. It's already the death of middle class. Obviously, the entire world is turning into a third world country right now. All right. So what needs to happen? What needs to happen to stop this? Well, I want to point something out. I want to go back to this word correlated. Wasn't it a week ago? that the current VP stood up in front of the public and literally made that exact same speech. We must, is what she said, create 25,000 new authorizations for businesses, really. And then she goes on to present fear of what happens if we don't. The correlation between what Draghi just said is the exact same speech that the current VP made. Both are dead nuts wrong. Neither one of them has the money or the capacity to do what they're saying. And both of them correlated are creating fear. If we don't do this, this is going to be bad. No, ignore them and take back the power where it's supposed to be in the hands of mom and pop. Stop funding their credit cards. These are nothing more than little children who stole mommy and daddy's credit card. And, Ma and then they went out, these little children, and they bought themselves some nice Cadillac Escalades. Well, they have they require a lot of gas to run, uh, as they're finding out right now, Mitch. But you know, seriously, what's it going to take? I mean, ten trillion bailout. I mean, how, how much? It won't work. Next, it, right. it won't work. I mean, even the concept of it is an illusion. It simply will not work. It's mathematically you, you never want to say impossible, but okay, this is impossible because if you were to print that amount of money, M one, M two. All that will happen is you will have hyperinflation. And I wasn't exaggerating. Go and look up the Weimar Republic. It literally took a wheelbarrow full of cash to go buy a loaf of bread. That is what happens when you turn on the printing machines. The US dollar will simply implode. And we've already lost 90% in the last 30 years of its value, right? That's called inflation. Well, if you've got inflation and you, all of a sudden you run into hyperinflation, the math is the math. This isn't going to happen. So, like I said, there is a solution, but the world has to wake up and get on board and it will be painful, but it's a hell of a lot less painful than printing M1 and M2 in perpetuity. Well, Mitch, do you think that, I mean, can we say that World War II was started because of inflation? It had an impact. That's part of the fear mongering. Well, and there, there is truth to it, but I don't think anybody, even as nefarious as they may be, seriously wants to enter into that type of conflict like you would have to be delusional and i isn't that what inflation makes you though does doesn't inflation make mom and pop delusional i prefer to keep it on the economic level than worry about nukes flying around um because that's not good for anybody the russians aren't yeah. going to do it they're, they're not stupid right none of these players for the most part are stupid they've put themselves in a box that have economic ignorance, there's no doubt about that. But it is correlated, right? So everybody's in the same box. If you can show leadership 
and a way out of the box in terms of the economic problems. That's what needs to be done. That's where our focus is to help mom and pop. But again, mom and pop is the economic engine. You get that economic engine going, all this other debt, you force the governments to stop the debt, stop the spending, et cetera, et cetera. You can start gaining control of this and over time work down because that's kind of what it is, right? This is a workout and a workout in financial terms of what you would do if you put something into a chapter 11, you can, you can do a workout under chapter nine, you can do a workout. Um, you, you can do certain things to help mitigate these unfunded liabilities, to help mitigate the national debt amongst the governments, right? It's a unified effort. And that's why I said before, what we're really looking at is a unified state's sales tax. So it's uniform, but that's part of the, the solution. And well, giving mom and pop back their ownership of the land under their feet so that their balance sheet is true um, that's part of the solution, and that can be done globally. You know, it's just it's just so hard to trust from an intelligence standpoint or from a care towards a citizen standpoint that they're going to do the right thing. We know that they're going to ask for more money. We we know that they're going to print more money, Mitch. We know that because they don't have the money to pay the unfunded liabilities. So they are going to ask for a bailout. We are broke. The whole world is broke. So despite what you and I are saying, hey, we need to go into recession and we need to go through that for a period of time together uh, to blunt that. I, you know, I just at this point, and I don't think you can blame me, Mitch, or a lot of other people. I just don't trust the government. And I think that what's going to happen, they're going to ask for a lot of money, Mitch, and they're going to sell us on how they have to bail out the banks because of unemployment, because it's going to help me. But I really hope that there, there's enough people starting to realize that when they say that, it's, it's like, it's almost, I, I wish there was an ETF or something to where it went the opposite of, of what these politicians are saying. Is there something like that? Is there an ETF like that, Mitch? Or is there there's a Kramer ETF or something? Is there anything? Well, the Kramer ETF, or the, the, it, you just do the opposite of whatever Kramer says. And then, yeah, that's basically okay. what it okay. is. But if you're going to take that bet, you can you can go short the banks when the market starts going down. I mean, that's, that's the truth of the matter. But I mean, so you know, I, I'm worried. I mean, you know, I've heard uh, some people say that they could bail out the economy for another 10 years. Do you no, think that's can't. possible? No. Try to tell us, because again, you know a lot about the Weimar, Weimar Republic, and I don't know that that's ever recovered, but no. explains, say you, get, right. say you get fools in office and they keep trying to bail out, bail out, bail out. I explain to the viewers, really explain to the viewers what happens. There's a lot of kids out there, Mitch. There's a lot of kids out there and they think that, let me get some money from the government. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about the repercussions. Will you please speak to them, Mitch, and explain to them that this is killing us. Explain to the kids, especially. Okay, so let me try and break this down. The rule of 72, depending on the interest rate says, and it's a, it's a fairly simple formula. You can look it up online. But what it says is that every seven years or every five years, depending on the, the interest rate, debt will double. So it's cumulative and it's compounding. Let's put the bonds and all the other stuff aside. Any debt will double depending on the interest rate every five to seven years. If you go back 30 years, okay, you've already had four sets of doubling. Well, the problem with that is mathematically, if you go back just in the last seven years and you look at your own family and you ask yourself in the last seven years, has your income doubled? And the answer is no. So you're automatically upside down. Now, the government's holding their hand out and saying, pay off my credit cards, which is somewhere around 163 trillion, including unfunded liabilities. Even if you said, fine, we'll pay off the 35 trillion, the problem is based on the gross domestic product, that's still going to take you 50 years, maybe. Wow. And they're not even smart enough to figure out how to fix that amortization schedule. Mitch, if it stopped growing, it would take 50 years. But the point is it can't stop growing. Right. And down. it's not going to take 50 years. No, no. And that's the problem. What they have done is they have inverted what should be an amortization schedule. You have a house, you have an amortization schedule. Over 20 to 30 years, you pay off the value of your house through principal and interest payments. They've inverted it. The rule of 72, well, we're not going to pay it off. We're just going to keep floating it up. It's inverted against a regular amortization schedule. 
One's going like this, the other's supposed to be going like this, but you can't make it go down when you don't have the money and they're taking all the money over here. It's, it's an absolute joke, it's a mess, it's not being run the correct way and how it's being allowed to continue to do this is sad to me. And so that brings me to my last question. Mitch, what is stronger, okay? Fear or apathy? What is stronger, fear or apathy? I think part of the problem is, and I've actually had conversations with people around me, some of these problems, a lot of people prefer to bury their head in the sand, not that they don't understand. It's just that it's complex and it is troubling. On the other hand, if you understand, you truly understand what's happening to you and why, then you're in a position at a minimum, everybody, doesn't matter what your political affiliation is, your money is being stolen. So if you understand what is happening, at least be in a position to defend yourself at an ARB, uh, appraisal review board hearing, what, regardless of your state, and frankly, even regardless of your country, because now New Zealand has reached out. So you have to understand what's happening. You should understand what's happening. You should not be afraid and bury your head in the sand. Part of the problem, Senator Betancourt literally used that line, which is why I responded um, to the Texas Finance Committee, Texas Senate Finance Committee. He literally used a fear mongering line. He said, well, we simply can't reverse course because if we do, the sales taxes are gonna go up 22%. There's not a stitch of truth in that statement. That is straight up fear mongering. What did Draghi do? Fear mongering. There's no truth to back him up. It's a very simple issue. Mr. Draghi, the answer is no. Sit down, shut up. People in the European Union simply said, that's it. If Italy stood up, the European Union would crash tomorrow morning. Italy stands up on their own two feet and says, that's it, we're through, get lost. I mean, listen, the European Union, or the, uh, the British did it. They told the European Union, go pound sand. And, and they handled it foolishly, but they did, they did it. You know, they could, have, they could have cut the banks off. They could have shut this thing down. And eventually it will crater under its own weight. When you can no longer steal from the public, when you can no longer use other people's money, socialism dies, right? Good. You're shining light Good. on the cockroaches. And that's how you do it. Last thing, Mitch, you know, what, what kind of advice would you give to someone like me? Um, you know, again, I lost everything. When I rebounded, I chose to have a family versus a career. So I don't have a lot of money. Um, I don't have consumer debt. I have enough money to purchase a house. Inflation is super hard right now. Obviously, I had to change a career and making a lot less money. That kind of sucks. So what what would you what kind of a, and I, I have four children. I'm married happily. I love my wife um, and my children. Um, you know, what kind of advice, money advice would you give to, to someone like me, someone that was your friend? You're doing the right thing. There's no doubt about it by staying away from the debt. Unfortunately, not everybody is in that position of debt up to their eyeballs because they had to make a decision, put food on the table, put medicine in the kids or pay the taxes. So those people are in a really tight, bad position. They fell for the problems, hook, line and sinker. The apathy may be part of the problem, but we can't even look at that. We've got to really look at the economic scenario right now to say they have to get help. And that, unfortunately, based on our math, at least in debt and central appraisal district, is 37% of the households. So that includes multifamily households and single family homeowners. It's a bad problem. Everybody well, else, yeah. stay away from the debt. Debt is fine if you know how to handle it. If you're a developer and your debt is minimal or you're a stock investor and the debt of the company is 30, 40%, and you can see how exactly it's being used, which a lot of the companies try to hide. But if you can see it and you understand it, it's not a bad thing. It's fine. The problem is when it's assumed by the government that they have an implicit amount of money that they can steal from the taxpayers, turn it into a credit card, lever it up 20 to one plus, it's gonna be bad. Well, yeah, I mean, they're maxing out the credit card and they're instead of paying off the credit card, they're just slipping it under mom and dad's door. 
and going and making another credit card. That's yes. literally what they're doing. Yeah, and here's, oh, will. I'm going to ignore that credit card and let's just keep charging this thing up. I mean, it is so messed up that the world is c- crumbling. And if we have that sudden burst of the bankruptcies for homeowners, I mean, a flood of inventory in the real estate market right now, that will send prices absolutely plummeting because the prices have been propped up by no inventory and people's insane purchasing power. That purchasing power is gone. We see that across the world and in our own nation. Why is the purchasing power gone? Well, we're not being printed any money. I'm not getting any money. Interest rates are not 0%. And even then, Mitch, you know, all that price went up was n- the run up was never natural. It was a Fed induced inflation crisis. I repeat, guys, this is a federally induced worldwide. Everyone got hit by this inflation crisis. And honestly, Mitch, and I look back, you know, because they, you know, I remember that first and we did a video. I, the first signing uh, for the COVID was six point two trillion. Right. Unimaginable amount of money. And I, and I think about that, you know, and we know this now because EIDL and the PPP loans, you know, the bad part is the lack of accountability. Like Alan Greenspan said, his issue was, is he trusted the market to take care of itself. Now, when the market takes care of itself, Mitch, it just layers fraud on top of fraud to keep it going. That's how the market takes care of itself right now. So, I mean, it's, it's a bummer, man. I'm saving my money. I'm going to get the viewers out of here. Any last... Any last um, solutions you want to talk about, Mitch? I want to expand upon what you were just talking about to help everybody understand the depth of this problem. First of all, the crash is coming to you shortly. And the reason why is because you have cross-border banks and cross-border shadow banks that make on-balance sheet and off-balance sheet loans through credit receivables to each other. In other words, they're basically guaranteeing each other's loans for which they can't even get access to the assets. So when you understand how screwed up this really is, it has to stop. And the only way to make it stop is let the banks go. And yes, as I said, there will be pain. On the other side, when prices normalize under a true market environment, this will never happen again because the net result of this will be bad. It will be much worse if they print money. Yeah. You will go to a severe greater depression. The original depression was give or take around 25% unemployment. Our math shows about 35% in a greater depression. If this can be walked down over time, which it can through the methods that we've outlined, we stand a much better chance, although painful a much better chance of fixing this once and for all. But the bottom line is when you've got cross-border banks making loans that don't have any money, including Deutsche Bank, okay? And you have shadow banks making on balance sheet and off balance sheet and borrowing from those same cross-border banks. It's a spaghetti bowl and it will blow to shreds because you just simply can't get blood out of a stone. The blood is the tax dollars. The stone is mom and pop. You can't get blood out of a stone. You you know what? An interesting thought just popped in my head, just popped right in there. The Fed, Mitch, and let me explain, the Fed is a shadow bank. The Fed is, well, because they can print money, so they're the ultimate shadow bank, but also they're Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is a long arm of the Fed. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is is helping to keep this all going. I would say, would you say that they're the biggest shadow bank, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? Or Fannie, who's the biggest? Freddie, and HUD, and yes. Well, I can't get to the assets, right? This is a it's this, it's intercreditor it's intercreditor paper moving between them and backstopping each other, right? I mean, right. Just simply, they, I, you could take everybody in the IRS and put them on this, and it would still take them years to unwind this mess. You know what's amazing is like all of the corruption, all of the fraud, all of the manipulation, all of the decades of fraud on fraud and fraud, and now we're starting to see it hit the wall. Well, Hold on, guys. You, you, your 2008, 2009, 2007 credit default swaps, they haven't been paid off. They're still there. They haven't been walked down. Now, nobody knows what they're truly worth, but they're worth something. I mean, there is value there. 
the problem is you got to go to work on it to figure it out. Yeah, because it's like a credit card, right? They just threw the credit cards in the back of the room. <laughs> the credit cards are still there. They where's the asset though? There's I don't know, it's just a credit card. Where would the yeah. asset go? Who knows? Well, that's my house. That's why one of the things that you hear is in total, we're around 250 trillion versus 163, is because of the extra extraordinary issues associated yeah. with all the credit default swaps, all the CLOs, all the mortgage-backed securities. And people throw these numbers out, and they may be right, but you see, the real problem is that you can't see it. It's hard to figure out what the math is when it's all hidden. So the people that are doing the hiding are the big banks because it's off balance sheet. Well, so they the can't hide from you. Hide, yeah, they can't hide from you, Mitch. That's for sure. Uh, and I really, they can't hide from our community. The IRS, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, right. I do understand the math. Well, at least you understand the math, my my friend. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get us out of here, Mitch. That was a great breakdown on what's happening around the world. I mean, it's the same thing that's happening here, and they're they're really suffering. So probably, hey, pay attention. I mean, the writing's on the wall. I mean, literally, just look at any wall. Doesn't matter what north, east, west, south. Just look at the wall. Look at the writing on it. Don't even have to go close. It doesn't require 2020 vision. It's in, in massive neon letters. Just like my thumbnails. Okay, same thing. Just read the whiting on the wall. And other than that, you guys, thank you for traveling along with us. Don't forget, if you have 10 seconds, please go to the video's description, sign that petition, join the movement, help us get fair taxes back into this nation. Even if I don't even know if that's the thing, fair taxes. But when you guys are done taking 10 seconds to sign the petition, don't forget, I've been working tirelessly, tirelessly to help you guys empower yourself and conquer apathy which is to say, take the courses. That's step number two. Take the courses. Even if you don't own a home, take the courses, figure out how property tax works. And actually, if you're renting from a landlord, tell your landlord, hey, if I can save you some money on your taxes, will you reduce my rent? Think about it, guys. Now, other than that, if you guys are out there investing in real estate, you guys already know I wish you luck. And before I go, Mitch, look like you had something there. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody that those courses that Travis created are free and yes. they are generic enough to be used in your home state and as far away as New Zealand. And to the person in New Zealand, thank you for reaching out. Very interesting. That's right. And we hope you win.